Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of My name is Hans. I'm Edward. And we are your hosts for now and forevermore. Or until sore bees can some each in your sleep. Ah, I'm really glad you said that uh, because you don't you don't see it in the notes, but it is something that no. we're going to speak about in this episode. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, for all of you wonderful listeners, if this is your first time, welcome to one of the internet's best variety podcasts dealing with gaming, entertainment, technology, and lifestyle, all wrapped up in a wonderful geeky reward show because we're just <laughs> awesome like that. Okay, well, whatever floats your boat. Thank you, Edward. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you one of our regulars, welcome back, bitches. <laughs> Hello. We have a pretty fun episode ahead of us, whereby we're finally going to reveal those secrets we have been alluding to, because embargoes are lifting and we can finally talk about some of these wonderful surprises um for those of you who actually watch you've most likely already seeing these surprises in the background yeah <laughs> but yeah. for our listeners One or two. Uh, we're gonna keep teasing you but we will eventually speak about it a little bit further on in the episode so as per normal mm -hmm. we're gonna go through some reviews and previews before getting into the meaty content and then of course delicious nsfw <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> So getting uh, straight into it, um, I've watched a fair amount of, I guess, movies and TV series over the, the last uh, week or so. As <laughs> um, always. Um, as <laughs> always. And uh, one of those has to do with uh, a brand new Apple TV Plus film called On the Rocks, which stars uh, Bill Murray and Rashida Jones. And it's actually written, produced and directed by Sofia Coppola. So, you know, when, when I saw her name, I was like, oh, cool. You know, this must be pretty great. Um, and it was mm. a, a decent film. Um, it, it's not riveting by any means. Uh, it, for, the, for the most part, it really just seems like a snapshot into the life of a father and daughter. In this case, the father being Bill Murray and the daughter being Rashida Jones and her husband, Marlon Wayans. So not to get, you know, too much into it but it essentially looks at how her daddy issues filter in <laughs> to what happens with her relationship with her husband um but okay. I, I look that's really oversimplifying it it it's mm. i thought it was a it was a just a lovely look into the lives of you know a father who is somewhat eccentric and how his his actions both you know, whether purposeful or, you know, whether they didn't mean to, um, impacted his daughter's life and mm. and consequently her relationship with her husband. And also how sometimes getting advice from people you love is not always the best advice. <laughs> not I mean, always, yeah. It's, 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 it's always worth listening to 100% because the people in your life only care about you. But it's just, it, it's quite a fun mm. and quirky story about how a father tries to to guide his daughter because she thinks that her husband is cheating on her because the father was a serial cheater. <laughs> um, but obviously it makes things a little bit more interesting, and complex because he's an art dealer. So he's quite eccentric, but also incredibly wealthy, um, whereas she isn't. So it, it's, it's quite cool you know, to see the different dynamics and that kind of thing. And it's um, look, it's an enjoyable movie. I wouldn't say it's riveting by any means, um, but it's a, you know, if you really don't have anything else to do, it's, it's a decent watch at the very least, mm. you know, um, it's not amazing, but it, it's something. Um, yeah. Oh, now, something that y'all must all avoid, okay, is the new remake of Raul Dahl's Witches. Ah, <laughs> uh, that looked crap. That looked so, mega crap. <laughs> I am a big fan of the early 90s film with Angelica Houston. I, I mean, I, I never had nightmares from it, but as a kid, I distinctly, distinctly remember loving that film and watching her transformation into the Grand High Witch you know, and how the story goes on about this little boy who gets turned into a mouse. Um, you know, also, I, I was a, a very avid reader in my youth, and I read pretty much all of Roald Dahl's works. So, you know, to see that at the time come to life was just incredible, but also it's just a really good movie. Even by today's standards, if you go back and watch the original, which is, yeah, sure, um, practical effects aside and so on and so forth, it really is a good film. Like, like there's a genuine scare factor because the books are scary. I mean, yes, they might be written for children, but they're frightening 
you know, the, the subject matter that they deal with, how these, these witches want to turn children into, well, actually just annihilate kids and to a certain degree eat them, you know? Uh, okay. so, <laughs> um, all of that, rather unfortunately, is completely lost on the 2020 film, which stars Anne Hathaway. It is... <laughs> It's really just not worth your time. Uh, we watched the movie. We got to about the one hour mark and we just stopped. We didn't even bother watching the last 30 minutes. We were like, this is just crap. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> there's, there's, re there's really no way, two ways about it. Like, there's such an overuse of CGI in this film. Now, you, you know, and that to me boggles the mind a little bit because... Although this film released on HBO Max, which is the HBO and, and Warner streaming service, um, it was actually meant to have a global cinema release. So, you know, when I watch this and I'm looking at these, at this really bad CGI, I'm talking about like it looked like an animation, like it was an animated movie put on top of a real movie. You know, it just looked out of place. It was Weird. obvious. It was mm -hmm. obvious what was CGI and what wasn't, you know, and... It, it, it just ruined it. It ruined it. And, and you know that they made other weird changes, like the fact that the witches are actually demons, apparently. And, um, you know, they have these like cuts in their mouths. I don't know. S stuff that you just look at, it, look at it and you're like, why? Why is this necessary? Why have you made these changes? Because it doesn't improve the film. It, re it actually yeah. detracts from what the, the message of the film was about, you know? Um, and there's literally no practical effects. So, mm. I mean, like even when Anne Hathaway is doing her grand high witch thing and her mouth opens up, like even her teeth and her mouth look fake. Like you can see it. It's all CGI. Uh, anyway, don't bother watching it. It's very, very much a children's film. I don't even know if children would continue wanting to watch it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but it's not the kind of film where I would say adults can watch with kids. You as an adult are going to be bored out of your mind. So, oh, okay. yeah, that's that. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, <laughs> Uh, something else we, we looked at, we decided that after watching a couple of movies, we would watch a documentary of some kind. And so we watched American Murder, The Family Next Door. Okay. And let me tell you, do not watch that movie if you want to feel good afterwards, because you just won't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I know that sounds weird um... to say, right? But like, I mean, if, if I think to something like um, a documentary like um, The Tiger King, that was entertaining, you know? And even though, you know, the guy ended up in jail and nobody really knows what happened to that other blonde lady or, or whether she killed her husband or not, it was kind of, um, you know, it was tolerable. You know, you didn't feel awful at the end of it, all right? Mm. American Murder, The Family Next Door is, is shocking. Like, first of all, the guy was my age, which really just wrote home for me um i i don't look i guess the knowledge is out there what happens and stuff like that so you can find out i don't want to say it though because if you want to watch it you know there's like twists or turns along the way you know you can finally like if you really are interested in the mystery but it's just it's awful it's all about this american family and how this lady and her kids just one night disappear they just boop, vanish and then they go into looking at uh, what happened to her. Where did she go? Uh, was she abducted? Was she murdered? What, what, what actually happened to this lady? And I think the most frightening thing about it, the most frightening thing about it, is how the 90% like of the documentary is from footage from her Facebook and from mm. police, police uh, cameras and stuff. So it's not even like you know, the, you know, like normally documentaries that they'll follow people over a certain period of time, like the Paris Hilton documentary yeah. that, that I, we, we spoke about a couple of e episodes back. In this documentary, the whole thing is constructed from her Facebook posts. So as awful as the film was and the eventual conclusion of what happened, what also really frightened me was how much information this lady had on Facebook about yeah. her kids and about her. About you everything, know, yeah. About, yeah, about everything. So it's, it's from that perspective, it's really eye opening. You've got to be so careful about what you put online. Yeah. Um, look, either way, don't watch it if you want to feel good afterwards, because the realization of what actually happens to them or happened to them is a little bit soul destroying, what, to be perfectly what, honest. 
Well, the thing is, um, the, the subject in question for this documentary is Chris Weitz, isn't it? Yes, correct, uh, correct. Yeah, and and that's actually a very, very recent thing that happened. I think it was four or five years ago. It's only two years ago. ago. No, two oh, years two ago. two years. Yeah, uh, and, it's um, super recent. I follow a channel called Jim Can't Swim where they analyze the entire interrogation process of Chris Watts. Um, wow. And yeah, it's it's actually scary. And yeah, as Hans said, it, it's not a feel-good documentary, um, especially if you find out what happened, <laughs> when, when all the truths start coming out. Um, yeah, it's, Look, uh, it's on my watch list. <laughs> it, it, it does leave a lot more questions at the end. Um, which, which, which now that you've, what you've mentioned to me, Edward, I actually, if you could send that to me, I'd love to watch that as well, because I yeah. have questions that they didn't exactly answer in the, the documentary. And, and okay. the reason why I'm not, I'm being a little bit evasive now is because if I say what we know, it ruins watching the documentary because then you know how it ends, Yes. <laughs> you know, so that's the only reason why I'm being a bit coy about it. But, um, yeah, look, it's a, it's a startling look at social media and, um, the human psyche and what people are really capable of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and, and as Edward said, it's very recent. So this is not something from like five, 10, 20 years ago. It's literally two years ago that this happened. So it's uh, it's shocking. It's modern. It's very, very modern. And it means it's like, it's this could happen today recent, again. Yeah. Obviously today, you know. Um, anyway, moving on to something a little bit more lighthearted. So for those of you who listen to the podcast, some of you might know, I haven't really mentioned it, but I am somewhat trilingual um of course i'm only really like fully versed in the english language but i ha i can do broken afrikaans and i am possible in french although i am actively working at becoming completely fluent in french um so as you know i did mention a previous french show last week uh, la revolution which i really hope most of you went to watch um that aside i'm back with another french series this week <laughs> um so this one is called um, call my agent, which which is really funny because that's not the name in French. <laughs> oh, okay. That's and just local and the reason why I have to mention that is because there is a trend throughout this show for the subtitles to be completely wrong <laughs> to what they're actually saying in the French language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, call my agent in, in English, or rather it's actually 10% in French. That's the actual word. Um, 10%. Uh, so, um, it's all about a acting agency and it follows the lives of these four agents. Um, and well, you know, them dealing with clients, which for the most part are actors and actresses. Um, you know, I wasn't really sure what to make of it at first, but the more I watch, the more I really have grown to enjoy it, just because it does offer somewhat, like a very fine and wonderful balance between being completely over the top and very realistic. You know, because, you know, you often hear about celebrities and their demands and, you know, stuff like that. Now, it doesn't delve into that. It more, it more has to do with what an agent has to do to procure work for these people. You know, so like the one um, episode has to deal with how this beautiful actress... Um, who I didn't know was a famous French actress, and she was actually just guest starring as herself in the episode. Um, she had to go and have her cheeks done. Otherwise, she couldn't be in this Quentin Tarantino film. And <laughs> the whole episode explores, you know, beauty versus being aged and how ultimately at the end she didn't do it because why should you change yourself to fit somebody else's version of you? You know, so I'm, I'm not saying that every episode has that kind of a thoughtful meaning to it, um, it, you know, because it, it's, it's, it's somewhat procedural, but at the same time, it's also, um, serial as in, you know, it's a full on arcing story. So as mentioned, as Edward mentioned earlier about bees, um, in the show, <laughs> right after the first episode, the main owner of the, um, <laughs> of the agency dies because he swallows a wasp. It's just one of those, like, what the hell even is this oh. that's, like ridiculous? Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Um, so Personally, for me, sure, you know, it might be a French show, but like, you know, the acting is good and the script is entertaining and there are a lot of twists and turns. Um, and it's a good show. Like, if you if you like sort of comedy that's a little bit, not necessarily dark, but it's very French, as in it's just in your face. It feels very real. It's good. I, I, I would recommend it. So Call okay. My Agent on Netflix. Now, I just want to speak a little bit more about how I mentioned the name is different in English as to what it is in French. And how like yeah. subtitles are like totally wrong. So 
A great example I have, and I'm sorry for swearing, um, is there's one piece where the one agent goes, putain de chien. And as a French speaker, I'm like, whoo, whoo, yeah, like, how uh, dare uh, you say <laughs> that, you know? Like, she's basically saying, F the dog. <laughs> okay, like, it's very explicit. The, <laughs> the subtitle was European. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, I was looking at that and I'm like, you know, often you get people who are like, oh, I watch lots of anime, so I can speak Japanese. I'm like, listen, bitch, if you're thinking you're going to learn what they're saying, I have news for you. Subtitles are often not correct. Okay. (laughs) So um, it was just just one of those funny moments. And there's a lot of things, you know, like they'll say a completely different word you know, in French. And of course I can pick it up and I can understand it. And then like, I read the subtitle and I'm like, why did you even change that? Like you didn't yeah. even need to change that. It, it could, it would have worked perfectly. The, anyway, anyway, that's just a small little, I guess, criticism for, for subtitles for a language I can actually understand versus when I watch German and Korean and Japanese or whatever else is uh, available. All the other stuff, because yeah. I mean, I, I know some people don't enjoy watching movies or TV shows if they're in another language. For me, it's all about the content. You know, if the mm. actors can act and the content is good and it's engrossing, what does it matter if you have to read text? You know, exactly. um, yeah. Anyway, in other words, don't don't deprive yourselves from something good just because you don't want to read a subtitle. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, cool. So that's basically most of what I watched. Now we're going to get into um, some of the things that we alluded to previously but couldn't say anything. Uh, first and foremost, Edward recently reviewed a brand new game, which is now available. Yeah, um, so I reviewed Watch Dogs Legion. It's ah. what it's called. It's the third Watch Dogs game. Um, to anyone who's familiar with the first two, it's pretty much just the same with some new systems. For those who are not familiar, um, it's essentially an open world sandbox game set in London um, where <laughs> you literally can hack anything. Uh, you can hack the cars, you can hack. ATM machines, you can hack people. Um, and it's all about how the fallout of, of the, this big activist group, Dead Sick, how, how the fallout of them basically falling away um, for reasons I can't mention, uh, <laughs> come back. It, it's about the resurgence and finding out about why what happened, um, why the start of the game even happened. Um, and yeah, it's it's. I think it's a good game. There, there, you see, a few fascinating... that's an interesting um, opinion, and of course, it is your mm-hmm. opinion because you reviewed the yeah. game. Because since yeah. it's out now, and we've seen a lot of other reviews, and it's interesting because yours seems to go against the grain, which which I'm very glad yeah. about because I, I love it when um, our stuff is a little bit controversial sometimes, you know. <laughs> and um, in, in this sense, it's I, I just find it fascinating that you know. Not only did you really enjoy it, but you didn't have any problems. Not at all. Um, on uh, I played it on the One X for context, and uh, the Xbox One X. Yeah. And <laughs> it was a smooth process. So what happened is we got it uh, early, as always, as many of our games do. And the night it was finished downloaded, I launched it. About 15 minutes in, it crashed. So mm. I went to bed. The next day, it was smooth sailing. And from there on out, I never had any issues. It was fast loading times. It was super smooth gameplay. Um, and yeah, I've, I've seen some reports online about PS, the PS4 version being optimized badly or something. I'm not entirely yeah, certain what's going on there. And apparently, the Xbox version is bricking consoles as well. Yeah, so something I like think, that. And it's weird. <laughs> you were just really lucky, I think. <laughs> I uh, think so. That it worked really well for you. And it's interesting uh, because they've actually just released a patch. Uh, we yeah. received the, the, the press release this morning saying, uh, look, it's available now. Um, if you had problems with it during the review period, please go back and see if they've fixed it. And if they have... Mm-hmm. Please either amend your review or, um, you know, if you don't want to amend it, that's your, you know, prerogative as well. You know? Yeah. Um, um, it's interesting. It's just very interesting. Yeah, it's it's just weird how it's it's all hardware, you know, and okay, look, they have to I optimize mean, for everything. Okay, now that you, you, you've sort of mentioned what the game's about and that, 
Is it mm. worth playing? Like for somebody who is interested in, okay, let's say, I'll answer this in, in two ways. One, mm. for people who've played Watch Dogs 1 and 2, will they enjoy yeah. 3? And secondly, if you haven't played any of the Watch Dogs, but you like open world games, is this for you? Okay, so for the first question, I would say yes. If you've played 1 and 2, definitely play Legion. Um, it's it's not the sequel fans of 2 wanted. I'm a huge fan of 2. It's it's the best yes. game of the 3. Uh, but yeah, definitely play it. The way they incorporate the stuff 1 and 2 uh, introduced is very natural. It feels like a natural progression as a sequel. So there's that. Um, for new players, I would say play one, if uh, but or play two. Now, now the reason I say this is because the two games are fundamentally different. One is a serious hacking game. It's about um, stopping um, crime syndicates and sex traffic syndicates. And number two is all of it's a, it's a fun game. It's entertaining. It's all about this young adult guy trying to save Fra San Francisco. And the two are fundamentally different. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Play, play Legion nonetheless, but begin with one <laughs> or two. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, a very interesting opinion. Now, uh, before we move on to anything else, um, if you do follow myself or Edward or even Vame as the publication we write for, um, we produce a, a cool little short about the release of Watch, Dog, well, Watch Dogs Legion. Yes. Um, we also received a pretty cool press release. So if you're watching the video, and I'll, I will describe it for those of you who are listening, in the background you'll see that I actually have the Watch Dogs Legion flag, and on the other side, a really distressing pig mask. <laughs> yeah, which um, I don't <laughs> no, no, nobody really does, because like I said, it, it's somewhat distressing when you see it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're privileged not only to review the game, but also to receive like a, um, like a, a launch PR pack, which, was, which is quite cool. Um, now, with that said, um, there's another game Edward reviewed, which I actually already thought we spoke about, but I see here that he's added Pornhub. Now I need to know what this is about. <laughs> okay, so so we did speak about the game in the past. It's it's Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Um, so I won't go into too much detail about what I thought about the game. Um, I just wanted to bring it up again because... Uh, I think the review only released last week. I can't remember when we published the review. Um, but the moment that review dropped, again, the Facebook thing happened, and I started getting ads for everything. <laughs> um, and I thought, well, since I'm getting the ads, I've got to Google shit anyway. And I Googled Super Mario 3D All-Stars porn. <laughs> and oh, I of found, course you did. <laughs> I found the most fascinating post. It, it's it's a few weeks old at this point, to be fair, but I found the most fascinating post from Pornhub Insights. Now, we'll go into that later, but yeah, I just thought I'd say that much. It's not as fascinating as the fact that you can play a 35-year-old game on the Switch at the moment, but there you go. Yeah. So, that's yeah. awesome. Wow. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I, 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 we're going to speak about it a bit later, I presume, because this is not yes. the NSFW section. Oh, no, okay. it's Fair not. enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Now, something else that um, we absolutely have to speak about. And um, right now, if you are watching the video, you will see a wonderful rectangular obelisk in the background. Um, <laughs> and for those of you who kind of guessed correctly over the last several weeks, yes, it Thank is you. the Xbox Series X. Um, we have been very privileged to be selected by Microsoft to receive a console early for unboxing and reviews. Um, our unboxing is live at the moment, so we will link to that. Please, if you haven't already, I would love a like and a subscribe. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, with, with, with that said, um, I can talk about it a little bit. It is, it's a gorgeous console. I didn't expect it to be as nice as it, as it is in person. I mean, you know, you see it in pictures and it, it really doesn't do it justice. It is solid and premium feeling. And in addition to that, the actual unboxing experience is next level. I mean, you know, generally speaking, you know, when you get products, you, you open the box, you pull it out and there's nothing special. Um, mm -hmm. 
Apple does things a bit differently. They, they put their product front and center. So, you know, when you open the box, the first thing you see is the product. And I'm happy to say Microsoft has actually taken that to heart. And they've done the same for both the Series X and Series S, whereby once you've managed mm -hmm. to peel off the labels and open it up, it actually opens a bit like a ring box. Um, the console is front and center. And in addition to that, they're both beautifully wrapped. Now, I know that's a weird thing to say, but they've wrapped the consoles. Like normally that, that funny um, like rubbery paper is just around the product, you know? Yeah, it's, it's not, it, these are wrapped like presents. And they even have these beautiful placards with power your dreams on them. It's just, it's just wonderful. I mean, look, not to push my own video, but, but watch it. Go and look it out. It, it's, it's genuinely a really great experience. And I tried my best to, to capture what it's like, if, like, like for you to one day open it, you know? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's really awesome. Um, for those who don't know, the, the new series consoles, the X and the S, are releasing on the 10th of November for um, 6999 for the S and 11999 for the X. Um, we actually have both of them on order already. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. And I'm currently now in the process um, of reviewing it. I know that Edward will also have some hands-on time with it. Um, and look forward to that possibly next week. If not next week, maybe the week after. We'll just have to uh, see exactly um, how much time we're allowed to get with it and what our final impressions are because we're not allowed to say anything just yet other than the fact that it looks really pretty and the unboxing is super premium <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, okay so uh, those are reviews and previews we're going to go into some of the meaty meaty content that we have for you today and speaking of meat the meaty um, content <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're not at NSFW yet, Edward. <laughs> um, no, I'm just thinking about this thing. The, <laughs> the, the, the first two topics that I'm going to speak about, they're um, more quality of life improvements, I would imagine, you know, for anybody in their lives to make, make things better um, versus actually being topics that Edward and I are going to sit and talk about. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I saw them and I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to share it with, with you guys um, because that's what we do. We love talking about the things we find and and, you know, especially if it makes our lives better. So the first one is called Just the Darn Recipe. And if anybody has gone online and looked for a recipe, you will know the struggle yeah. of how these people write their whole life story about how it made them feel and how they orgasmed when that tastes like, like, listen, bitch, That's I don't care. Anyway. Okay, like <laughs> just give me the recipe. I just want to do it now, you know? And, and often, like, like, I've read such bad ones, like, oh, it was, you know, this was my uncle's mother's fiance's brother's child's recipe. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't need your family lineage. I just want <laughs> to do the recipe. <laughs> okay, so, so, so just the darn recipe is exactly that. It's a website where. Um, you search for something, and if the recipe exists, that's what you get. It's literally just boom. This is this is these are the ingredients. This is how you do it. Bye, wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically, it's basically you know those old recipe books all of our mothers have, which are just <laughs> books filled with recipes. It's basically yes. that. You, you don't get yes. any extra stuffing or whatever. You flip to a page, and it's just a recipe. <laughs> It, it's people that, that, I mean, look, I get it. I get it. Google, it's, it's a whole Google thing, right? So Google SEO often requires a minimum of 300 words for your article, whatever it is that you've written to, mm. you know, sort of to, to have a better SEO rank. Okay. Yeah. But honestly, really, guys, it's a recipe. You know, I don't need you to tell me your life story or the, who the love of your life is or how it made you orgasm. I don't, you know, no, I just, just tell me how to do it. You know, you don't even have to write it out. Just give me like the the, the basics, you know? The, uh, look, look that's how I feel, okay? And <laughs> as somebody who's actually written recipes, okay, like my butterbeer recipe that's available on Vame is, yes, sure, it's a little bit embellished at the start. But after that, it's instructional. I literally just have images and what you need to do. It's not exactly. a, it's not a, <laughs> this whole, oh, you know, my love for Harry Potter and, you know, I want to be with Hermione. No, it's nothing like that. It's just, <laughs> this is the recipe. Drink it, it's delicious. 
Um, now, with, with another one of these um, life improvement things, it's also it's, it's just a very simple thing. Leave the leaves alone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, granted, it is uh, it is summer for us now, and we've we've come out of winter. Um, but we all know that autumn feeling, right? Where there's leaves upon leaves upon leaves Everywhere. drop to the ground and you end up, you feeling, you feel like you, you're raking all the time. Like it just doesn't stop. Yeah. There's a reason for this. It, it's actually really good for the environment. So, um, I found this, uh, this, this blog post, which just talks about how, um, there is a purpose behind leaves that fall. And it has to do with ecosystems and ecology. And, you know, you might not think much about it. You're like, oh, you know, but it's my garden. You know, how is that going to really make a difference? Mm. Every little bit makes a difference. So now, of course, I, I mean, if it falls in your driveway and it's on bricks or tar, yeah, sure. Scrape it away because yeah, nothing's going to grow on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if it's falling on like flower beds and stuff, th- there's a lot of new, well, not even new research. It's just... The, the idea is you leave it because not only does it become compost eventually, all right, which then nourishes the, the plants around them, but it also serves as like food sources for like moths and other little creatures and creatures, which actually then help to not only stabilize, but nourish the soil. So when you actually, you know, rake the stuff away, you're technically robbing nourishment from the critters and creatures that help make soil good for your plants to grow. Jeez. So it's just a, just a small little thing. So I mean, like, so, so the next time you want to fight with your gardener because they haven't raked properly, <laughs> or Maybe perhaps just you do it yourself, rethink. you know? Yeah, just just get them to actually put it into the flower beds and leave it. I mean, look, it's winter. What's going to happen? Nothing. It's just the leaves are just going to decompose and go into the soil, and there you go. Yeah. You know. Uh, so yeah, I the, will, the <laughs> I, I yeah. will add that leaves make for a perfect. Extra, uh, extra nourishment when you make compost. So yes, but but yeah. that's exactly it. Well, even better then. So so maybe you you don't want you think it looks unsightly and you don't want them in your garden. Fine, make a compost section of your garden then, where yeah. you actually take all of it and just leave it there and then let it nourish the soil so that later on, come spring and summer, you actually have really nourished soil for your plants. I mean, that's yeah. another way of doing it as well. Yeah. Anyway, that was really the two super basic things that i just I saw and i was like yeah little psa is like you know this is a cool recipe site leave those leaves mm. um i can imagine chris um, crocker <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, leave, leave those, those leaves leave. alone <laughs> we're showing our age edward yeah we, we really are gosh. um now moving on to something a little bit more i guess a scientific or cool so previously in Gettle, we've actually spoken about um, advances in science and technology to do with the brain. Um, and one of those specifically had to do with um, controlling your dreams and how people were looking into that. Um, we also mentioned at one point in time Elon Musk and his uh, contraption that is basically going to create cyber pigs to kill us all. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> today... Um, we're, we're expanding a little bit on that and um, it's actually, this is, this is truly fascinating. So there is a lot of research being done into, well, still being done into the brain, exactly how mm-hmm. it works and how we can possibly stimulate it to, um, you know, help people who've had aneurysms or strokes or any other kind of disease, maybe even Alzheimer's or dementia, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now there's been some incredible new Australian research Um in fact, not just research, patents and patients that have have sort of been revealed to have um, had an experimental, uh, what is it? It's an experimental brain computer interface called a stentrode. Um, and essentially, look, it, it's, it's we, we, as always, we always link to the content so you can always go and read it up. I'm going to just give you a sort of a very brief overview about this. Um, it was done at the, the Royal Melbourne Hospital and uh, these two patients that had the implant or, or the, the stentrode put into their brains, it was a 75-year-old man, I think a 60-year-old man. And um, both of them suffer from um, progressive brain diseases, you know, which would eventually lead to things like paralysis and uh, loss of speech. So essentially yeah. like motor neuron disease, that's essentially what they have. So naturally scientists were like, well, what could we do 
to help these people. You know, like if they are losing the ability to walk or possibly talk or move their hands and that, you know, that mm. obviously leads to a, a rather diminished quality of life. So what could they do? Well, um, this thing called the stentrode, it's tiny. It's only the size of a paperclip. And what it does is it uses a combination of um, eye gaze technology, which I'll speak about in, in just a second, um, as well as um, the electrical simulation of the brain. Um, and the way that this works is, is this little stentrode thing is, is basically put into the blood vessel. And this is very interesting because I was like, oh, is it directly on the brain? Um, so what, what they, they, they did, and you know, th this was published in the Journal of Neurointerventional Surgery, um, is they actually used blood vessels to enter the brain. So they didn't actually really, I mean, obviously they cut open the, the, the skull, but not, it's not super invasive is what I'm getting at. Um, and they actually were able to push this tiny little implant in, which was made of nickel titanium, and they actually placed it near the motor cortex. Now, not only is it like small, but even the little electrical node thingies that it has, and I think there's 16 sensors, um, you know, sent to be corrected. And what they do is they actually fire um, on that motor cortex. But now that works in tandem with the eye gaze technology that I was speaking about just now, whereby um, a camera looks at the patient, right? And it judges where their eyes are on the screen. And then depending on how they think, so in other words, it's all got to do with the motor, the motor cortex in the brain, right? So when you think of doing certain things, so like if you think of clicking the left mouse button, that yeah. fires a certain portion of your motor cortex, as, yeah. in, as in it lights up and people can see which section is doing what, right? Yeah. So what this does is it technically reads that and allows you just by sight to activate and move and, and use a computer. It's absolutely oh. the most incredible thing that I've that I've read about in a, in a very very long time, and they actually write here how it allows people to command the zoom and the left mouse click function, just as a, an example, right? Um, in addition to that, there's also a 50 centimeter lead which comes from the brain. It comes out of the the, the body, and it basically sits on like a unit on your chest, and that transmits to the the thing by the computer to control the the cursor. I know, right? So, so the, the incredible thing about this is that they've been doing this for two years. So this is only just coming out now because um, the patients have survived. <laughs> I guess that's the, the big one. Um, <laughs> but, but, but more so that it's no longer a proof of concept. The fact that's is true. they've created this little stentrode device, which can actually go in, attached to the brain, then using an external monitor would connect it to something else to a PC, allow someone with with limited motor function to actually control things and th these two gentlemen as i said they're, they're aged gentlemen have said how it's just transformed their lives because they can do things like facebook and online banking and they can shop online they can actually do things that they couldn't do before because they couldn't use their arms and hands properly you know it's it's really it's it's absolutely incredible um as i mentioned before definitely uh, look it up, read a little bit more about it. Um, and, and just to add some more legitimacy to this, um, not only did the, is, has the Australian government supported this research, but it's also been granted funds from the US Defense. Um, well, actually, the US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, so DARPA, which some of y'all will know from conspiracy theories. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, in addition to that, even the US um, uh, Drug and Food Administration are wanting to approve the device for use. So it's an incredible breakthrough in brain control, or rather in allowing your, your brain to control things around you just by thought, because that's technically how it works. Um, so, so, so I mean, I mean, could, could you yes but yeah well, yes actually it's so funny you mentioned that because that's so true I mean, imagine having this module that you just you upgrade once a year and i'm going to get the apple one um <laughs> you can walk around your house and just think of like britney spears hey baby what hit me one more time and boom it plays in your home part you don't even have to do anything it just happens or like you, you sit down on your couch and immediately your holographic display turns on and it's your most recent Pornhub video. Well, that'd be Edward's life. But, um, you know, so. <laughs> well, uh, that, that also opens up a whole new can of security worms. 
thoughts but, uh, because Russia is going to have all your thoughts. Yes. You know, this makes me think of, I think it was two episodes ago when you, you mentioned those pleasure toys and how they can be hacked yeah. and how, you know, they could be used for blackmail. So you're absolutely right. This kind of a thing, would you, you need to be careful because it is using um, a wireless portion whereby, mm. you know, there's a control center on your chest and it communicates with the PC. So that would have to be super, super secure so that there isn't some sort of wireless hacker that's hacking into it. But now, of course, physical access is a different story. You know, if you're right yeah. next to the person and you're like plugging in your infected USB drive or whatever the case is, you know, <laughs> or, or, like, or, or you bring your phone close and you fry their brain because, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're thinking about all the stuff we've seen in movies and cinema, but... Yeah, like look, I'm look, thinking oh, iRobot. <laughs> look, all of that, that crazy stuff aside, right? It's... Um, yeah. It's incredible that we're able to now give, to a certain extent, a better quality of life to people who unfortunately do suffer from motor neuron disease. And yeah. from that perspective, it's well worth continuing the research. Yeah. You know, it's all about it's all about improving life. I mean, we know that there's going to be some villain out there who's going to want to... I mean, I mean, just like when we spoke with the dragonfly in a couple of episodes back and how efficient killers they are. We all know that yeah. if there's a real super villain out there, they're going to turn that into a killing machine because then yep. it's unstoppable. <laughs> I, imagine just a thousand of these patients suddenly superhumanoid because of their brain implants. <laughs> Becoming like like a the human centipede or whatever. Oh, whatever you are. <laughs> Becoming um, no, no, look, Speaking of, yes, thank you. There we go. Speaking of villains, um, Edward's got something cool to talk about. Yes. Um, so... Uh, I'm not a fan of the games, but I know you are, Hans. Uh, Metal Gear yes. Solid. Now, a, a few episodes ago, you spoke about how, I think it was the PlayStation 1 Metal Gear Solid, which read your save game and essentially oh, spoke oh, please, to you. Ju ju just, 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 for, just for a second, we've got to just, just talk about this for a second again. So yeah. what Edward is talking about is probably the most memorable gaming slash PlayStation experience I've ever had in my entire life. And... It has to do when you are your Metal Gear and you're going up against, I think it's Octopath. What's his name again? Do you know? Octo something. Uh, it's Octo something. Yeah. And essentially, he's a, a mind reader and he's like, put your controller down. I can make it move. And now, of course, you know, back in the day, like you, I was so young. I think I was like, I was like 10, maybe 11, you know, and I put it down and the controller vibrated across the floor. And I was like, ah! How are you doing this? You know, <laughs> so it's it's just yeah, it's 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 incredible. Sorry, I just had to give that a little brief uh, no, that's geek cool, moment. That's cool. Well, <laughs> I've obviously anyone who's played the games might might know about this, but I found the most fascinating thing about Metal Gear Solid Three uh, just a okay. few days ago, um, where also it, it takes also a kind of similar approach where. In the game, you fight this enemy boss called The End. Now, it's, it's, <laughs> he's basically a veteran yeah. sniper who, who perches on top some uh, forested area far away from you, and he keeps sniping you and tranquilizing you and taking you to jail until you finally sneak past. Now, what makes it even worse is he's got a ferret uh, which spots you if you try to sneak nearby him. Okay. Now, he's an old guy in the game. Okay, he's a very old sniper. Um, the canon is that he's basically, he needs to retire or he'll, he'll die. He's basically dead already. <laughs> yes. So, turns out that all you need to do is save your game, quit, go into your system settings, and, <laughs> and set your time ahead by one week. Go back okay. into the game, load your safe game, and you'll find he died of old age. That is brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Now, 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 what makes this more fascinating is that the end is ranked number three as a top 10 video game snipers and one of uh, the fourth greatest boss of all time um, by wow. the Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine. And That's it's awesome. all because it's such, he's such a challenging boss to fight. Turns out you don't need a challenge at all you just okay <laughs> but the, the whole thing with this is this yeah. is because it's a kojima game and yes. anybody who knows hideo kojima and i don't mean personally i mean the, the the games that he has crafted and created and had a hand in 
will know that he always, always subverts expectation. Yes. So the, I am not surprised that you could <laughs> do this. This is just, this is genius. It's okay? amazing. This is it brilliant. really is. Because, I mean, who's going to think of doing that at the time? Yeah. Unless, you know, you know what would have been cool? What would have been cool if maybe back in the day, you played the game and you paused and you got so busy at work and then you come back a week later <laughs> and you realize... And realized, then suddenly he's no. dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I assume That's if brilliant. the boss fight goes on for long enough, which is, I guess, a week, he does just die in the game as well. You see him oh. die then. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, uh, people today don't have patience. Maybe back then you would have waited a week. Exactly. <laughs> uh, back then people had to wait a week. Um, yeah. but, but also... <laughs> because this is a fundamental part of the game people were thinking it's only the original one it only it's only on the ps3 turns out no every single port and remaster of the game still has this function where you can just of course let it's die. part of the game like why it's would they, this ain't no witcher's remake okay? <laughs> yeah they didn't take out these things that make the experience <laughs> exactly so that's just fascinating to me. I wonder if Metal Gear Rising is the only one I actually like. I wonder if that has similar stuff. I think all of them do. Look, mm. as long as Hideo is attached to it. Um, I think Rising is the one where the first one that he wasn't really a part of, correct? Uh, no, that was... One of them, he, he fell out of, of, um, of love with Konami. I think it was just... five. Five, ah, okay. Yeah. Well, look, anything Hideo touches is amazing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Even if it's a tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> very, very bad segue. So sorry. <laughs> it's a segue nonetheless. Um, okay, so Edward, I see this is a wonderful continuation from yes. last week's a very girthy discussion a around lengthy discussion. the male phallus. Yes. Um, I see we're back again today with even more. Yes. <laughs> the journalist I am can't just let a subject go, okay? The, uh, <laughs> I am trained to research by you. Good. So Good. <laughs> you, you have learned well, my Padawan. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, literally right off the uh, episode 37 where we spoke about the average sizes and the average erection lengths and stuff. Yes, I yes. found the most in-depth paper on the subject yet. Now, okay. basically, researchers from the BJU International. I really don't know what BJU <laughs> stands for. I, I tried searching it and the official real? website is just BJU. I think it's... Yeah, I'm a BJU. <laughs> <laughs> I think it stands for like British Justice University or something. Oh my I gosh, I... I could, they couldn't have had a better acronym a most for this research. Acronym. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so this team of researchers no, from the United Kingdom. This doesn't seem real. <laughs> I swear it is. I've got a link for you and everything. Um, <sighs> okay. So, so they they compiled a journal, a a, a, st a, pa a paper. Sorry, not a page. A paper of many different studies. Um, yes. Where over <laughs> over fifteen thousand five hundred men have taken wow, a part. Okay, that's now that's incredible. That's incredible. it's huge. Yeah. Now basically, that's what she said. Yeah, it, and basically <laughs> they they took different studies, including the study we spoke about last week. That was part of this ah, paper. Wow. Okay. Um, so right, so they right. compiled all of the data. To get to the juicy, juicy details, you asked me last week and I couldn't answer, which is oh. the, the, a more accurate representation of the global average of the ah. penis. So, so what, was, what, was, what was that average? Just America? I think it was five inches, five point three inches or something. No, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what was it? Not, 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 not what was the average and actual average. I mean, like, what was the population for that average? Was oh, it America? Um, Yes, it was America. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fair uh, enough. Fair enough. So, so, so now we're actually at a global scale. Yes. So, 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 ah, so the BJU researchers. As Africans going to be throwing it off. Yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so they compiled everything and concluded that the average flaccid penis is found to be just nine point one centimeters, 
Now that's about okay. three point six inches, which is it's about that's not so bad. the size of my hey, thumb. I don't have a I don't have a ruler with no no, it's not the size of your thumb. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Don't forget uh, in the previous episode you said the thumb goes all the way from the tip down to a, basically the, from the there, wrist. Yeah. So it's, okay, so it's essentially the size of a pinky, I guess. It's yeah, better. that's a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, and the erect average is around thirteen point one centimeters, or about five point one inches in length. Now, okay. that uh, I did compared the two and i didn't add the notes so that was on yeah. me now but i think it's about a one inch difference to the two averages um, okay which is not bad at all it means no. many of y'all gents out there are larger than average since this is <laughs> oh well i say many this is the average after all this um, is the average yeah yeah yeah, yeah so anyway in terms also, of good look, look 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 do you know what's interesting about this uh, what We've actually spoken about uh, uh, the, the name of the um, that curve has has eluded me right now. But remember, we, we did speak about a bias, which has to do with um, intelligence and how people always overestimate. Do you remember? It was, it was um, many, it was, many episodes back. It was th- three or four episodes ago now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and this, this kind of correlates because... Um, you last week you actually said that a lot of people underestimate their size, yes. and they think they're a lot smaller than they actually are, right? Yes. Um, not this week. You're actually proving what the I mean, fifteen thousand people is a lot. Granted, it's I mean lot. there are what seven billion people, almost eight billion people. That's so not. I mean, it's still it's it's a good size number of people to to get an estimation from. Yes. Um, but essentially, um, the the one bias that I'm speaking of, and I, I know it was quite a few episodes back it was about how people overestimate their intelligence and how some people also overestimate what they're packing um you know thinking they have a lot more than what they actually do whereas this would put everything into perspective correct exactly it's just just interesting i'm sorry i've forgotten the name of it but yeah uh, it's about five or six episodes back anyway yeah the thing is it's all a blur so you're i can forgive (laughs) you for forgetting sorry i i I derailed you okay so we're going from length to girth okay so in terms of girth the average circumference, circumference that's the through line yes. of a flaccid penis, it turns out to be around 9.3 centimeters. Now, okay. this is... So it's the same. <laughs> it's like it's a block. It's fascinating. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it, it's pretty much one by one. Um, yeah, yeah. And about 4.5 inches when erect, uh, 11.6 centimeters okay. when erect. So it... it grows about an inch for many people for many men okay. um yeah i guess now the journal also confirms what we said last episode that about only five in every 100 men have penises longer than 16 centimeters which is about six inches in length okay so, so you're looking at, you're looking at what an extra two inches more yeah, uh, or, it's, it's like one and a half. It's almost two. It's almost yeah, two. Yeah, it's about a tiny ruler more. Um, yeah, yeah. For for the longest average um, oh, okay. for five in one hundred people. Also, um, the study did try, or well, the journal did try to put together data about how penis length ties into body weight and. Um, Yes, because a surroundings lot of people are stuff. curious about that. You know, like like there's always yes. been talk of hands and feet and arm length and nose length exactly. and forehead size and butt size. You know, there's all of these things that people have tried to find a correlation between. And, and I assume there isn't one, right? There is none. Um, Here we go. Like we, they always say, oh, guys with big feet. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Um, turns out that guys with big feet might have micro penises, if for yeah. all you know. Wow. Um, and it must be noted that we've mentioned that this is a much more accurate representation of the global average. Um, yes, the yes. thing is, most men in the world are Caucasian. Um, Caucasians make up the greater majority of skin color, so they couldn't nail that, down. Is that accurate? Apparently, according to this journal, I, um, I don't. I don't know if that's true. I don't uh, know. Look. Look, I don't know. I'd have to look it up, but yeah. but just looking from a population perspective, 
I mean, China alone is like 1.5 billion people and India people. like 1.2 billion. Yes, yeah. but that's people, not, not oh, just men. So I think... Oh, I see. I see. I think counting maybe half of those with maybe a, a majority of men in America or something. I don't know how it works. Okay, okay, no worries, um, no worries. But, so I think what we'll, what we'll take it is from wherever they were allowed to do the study. Yes, rather. at least so wherever it, the study came from. Which would most from. likely imply Western countries, which would therefore imply more of Caucasian base. Yes, that makes sense. so more Europe and Russia yes, and yes. America, basically. Yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so because of this, though, they couldn't conclude that race has any um, effect on penis size. Um, obviously, okay, but, no, but, it's scientific. But, but then, so. okay, 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 no worries. Look, look, I mean, I don't want to like, poke holes in this because I haven't read it. So I'm, I'm going on what, what, what you're saying. Yeah. So, what, what, I, what I think I'm going to understand from this is that they, they have a rather large sample size and they did yes. sample from a variety of countries from different yes. ethnicities all over the yes. world. But the largest proponent of people in the study were Caucasian. Rather, yes. rather than saying that, you know, the, 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 and throughout the whole world, you know, it's just for this particular study. Yes, obviously. But this yes. is the biggest okay. study yeah. we have at the moment. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, unfortunately, fine. Fair enough. So at least it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they can't nail down whether skin color has anything to do with penis size. Wow. Maybe okay. someone's doing that and I'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's assuming you can spell correctly, Edward. Exactly. I was about to say, <laughs> speaking of looking into stuff, um, <laughs> turns out that people cannot spell. Now, I mean, did you, I mean, I see you, you put this here and I'm like, did you really need a Pornhub reference to know this? Because just just uh, look I at how people need a Pornhub text reference, and but you can know that people don't what know. people spell wrong on Pornhub. Just just open social media, <laughs> and you'll know that people don't know how to spell. <laughs> well, there is that. There is that. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, so so this I found a little Pornhub insights uh, post where these they could, are interesting though. I know. Uh, you've shared these with me in the past. These are very interesting. I know. Now, now, now the thing is, Pornhub Insights lately have just been video games and COVID. So I wanted yeah, something yeah. fresh because I always <laughs> go to this website and it's either COVID or some video game, which I'm going to get into, by the way. Um, but I just went back 50 pages until I found the most interesting <laughs> little bit about how people sometimes don't spell correctly when their hands are otherwise occupied. Uh, okay. <laughs> people generally can't spell. So now I can imagine that they spell even worse when this is happening. Exactly. Now, ex exactly. Now, the thing is, um, when people search online for, for their, their latest fix, I, I guess you could say, um, One way I'm most, saying it. <laughs> most people actually go through Google. Um, yes. As, yes. So, as they literally just type in Google like porn or lesbian <laughs> or whatever. Now, it turns out that many people don't even type porn. <clears throat> they type porn with an M. <laughs> or lesbian with an M. <laughs> well, I mean, now, look, in all fairness, M and N are next to each other on the keyboard. So Even then... <laughs> Um, and then you get people who also spell henti for hentai, so they even they leave out the a completely. Or that I can believe. Amateur or carton for amateur or cartoon. Car oh, now, I was like carton. I was like what milk? I mean, yeah, like milk, lo like uh, a little homelander. Box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll spell Carson and mean it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and I just can't imagine what the results they get. I don't want to mess up my history and my own Pornhub analytics okay. for, for oh, this. Well, yeah, but, but hold on. Um, does does Pornhub have autocorrect? Like, you know how Google has, is this what you meant? Do they uh, have that? I think they do. I never spell wrong, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, look, I imagine it would be okay. I'd imagine you'd get something. Yeah. You know? Uh, I think if you type in form, you'll still go. You'll still get a link taking you to Pornhub. So there is that. Um, 
Um, you see, you see. So, so this is more to do with the fact that Google knows what you really want in yeah, your life. <laughs> obviously, because we all know Google knows everything about Actually, you. Actually, listen, while you're, you're speaking with that quickly, um, did you, I didn't know this, and I, I discovered this, this this week, and I don't want to derail what you're saying. I just want to just mention this quickly. Yeah. Did you know that there's actually a currently a $5 billion lawsuit against Google because the incognito mode still tracks you? Oh, yeah. Um, I read about I, it earlier I was, this week as well. I was shooketh when yeah. I saw that. Now, look, I, I don't use Chrome, so I, I think I'm okay. I'm, I, yeah. I trust Apple a lot more. Like, I, I'm pretty sure Apple Safari doesn't track anything. Uh, well, I'd like to believe. Well, that. yeah, Ooh. that's what we're <laughs> yeah. told. Um, yeah. um, but that's that's really bad. Yeah, you know, it just like it's one more X on the Google the on Google, the Google list of things thing. that they're doing wrong. Okay, anyway, sorry, carry on. Carry on. No, no, actually, on that note though, I did want to talk about some security stuff oh, re- pertaining okay. to Chrome earlier, but I removed it because I wanted to do more uh, research first. Uh, okay. uh, but it literally comes down to what so, you just so said for a future episode. Yeah, we can, yeah. we can actually delve into it a little bit more because look. Personally, for me, Safari is my browser of choice. But then again, I'm an Apple mm. user, and Apple no longer yeah. supports Safari on any other platform. Windows. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can't recommend it, unfortunately, because it means that a lot of people don't have it. So, you know, your options are limited. You know, it's like it's Firefox, it's Edge, and it's Chrome, I guess. Those are the three big yeah. ones. And Opera, uh, anyway, look, but even that. We're, we're, we're going on about something like totally different now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we, we'll, we'll relate this together. So, Edward, since you're the the resident NSFW guy, which yeah. browser should our listeners be using? <laughs> well, you could always use something like Tor, uh, which is a free uh, freeware app, Is that, is I that guess. the one that you, you can surf the, the dark web with? Yes. Uh, it, uh. it literally doesn't track anything. Um, okay. If you sign into a website on Tor and you click out of that website and you go back in, you have to sign in again because it doesn't save anything. Um, Tor, Tor is literally Tardis, one of orange, the most secure websites car. you can. So, <laughs> if you really care about that kind of thing, just use that. Okay, but what ifs? Yeah, <laughs> the, the the thing is, I use Edge for everything. I don't care about my history. I don't care about who so, has my data. So, is is this how you got onto this whole Super Mario porn thing? So you yeah, used your Edge browser. <laughs> I did use my Edge browser. Even on the iPad, I used the Edge browser. So. <laughs> you use a, you use Edge on iPad? Why? Because it links with my PC. It's just oh, it's got okay, all my info fair. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you see, I asked that as a brainwashed Apple user <laughs> because I'm so used to Safari just having my information. You know, like if I'm browsing a website here and I open my phone, I can just do it, you know, okay. I, to yeah, be I fair, um, uh, again, digressing, I didn't put my default <laughs> browser as Edge because I still like browsing. Like if I click a link, oh, it still enough. takes me to Safari yes, um, on the yes, iPad, yes, yes. Uh, which I prefer. But when I do my own browsing, it'll always be on Edge. Anyway. Okay. Um, on that note, though, I did do more browsing on Super Mario, yes, and while yes. doing research on Pornhub Insights. Now, <laughs> one of their more recent <laughs> posts this time, as I said, it's all video games and COVID. Now, yeah. in terms of video games, Super Mario recently became 35 years old. He reached his peak. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now... Yeah. The, the Hashtag is, relatable. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the wake of of him becoming 35 years old, Nintendo released a whole bunch of news about more games, of which Super Mario 3D All-Stars is one. Yeah, um, yeah. And now, since the news of that and the game's release, guess what? Be- Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> tell us. Tell us. <laughs> for Pornhub on Pornhub.com increased 142% when, when type Super Mario. Listen, hold but so but, but hold on. This is yeah. this is the same thing. Do you remember in I think our first five episodes of Gettle, you spoke about Final Fantasy VII? I did. I did. It's, it's exactly the same. the same. It's one and the same thing. So, <laughs> what we can allude to this is that like gamers, you be horny, yo. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and okay, but oh, no, but no, but but no, no, just on, on, <laughs> like I can get why you'd want to Google Final Fantasy seven people because Cloud, Tifa, and Eris be hot, but Mario. <laughs> yeah, people like the red plumber man and uh, Princess Peach uh, and Bowser. Okay. Oh, and the mushrooms. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, actually, in terms of the mushrooms, that's not one of the search terms. What is one of the search terms? Now it's one of the lesser <laughs> search terms. Is Koopla, which is the turtle. For... Oh, what? Why? Why? <laughs> the, the little turtle oh friend. Gosh. Now, obviously, oh, people word. people like to search Bowser, <laughs> which is just the main villain, and he's also a turtle, oh, I you, guess. Yeah, you, you know why? Because you know what he'd be doing to Peach. Yeah, we why. know why they keep running away <laughs> together. Um, and yeah, the, it, the searches on 13 September especially skyrocketed with an additional 53%. Um, because that was the actual anniversary of the original 1883. Five, sorry, 1985 release. <laughs> I just, I find this incredible. I just, <laughs> like, yeah. What I mean, are people trying to use it like Google? I mean, I'm, I'm I, trying to comprehend this because no. when I see something, my the, my first point of search is not Pornhub; it's Google. <laughs> the, that's the thing. I I guess if you're a, a big fan, you already know everything, so you're not going to Google. You're going to specifically go to Pornhub. <laughs> To see that juicy teats, Bowser nah, holds beneath his you, shell. You're going to okay. rule 34 of that stuff. That's what you're going to do. Ah, they, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do anyway. Um, <laughs> now, now, in terms of Super Mario, uh, Born Up Insights also went through the individual searches related to the game, such as just Mario and Princess Peach. Um, now, they don't oh. give that precise um, interest on these names, but those are immensely above searched above all the others but people also search for stuff like Bowsette which makes sense I have as well yeah Rosalina (laughs) I don't know I don't know the character Rosalina and even get this Mario Bros now why would you search that I have I wonder (laughs) (laughs) I have and I'll, I'll be honest I have never thought about searching for video game porn. I just happened. I just... It's just, it's just it's so unusual to me. Yeah. Well, do yourself a favor and go look at some Tifa porn or something. Um, I don't think you, I will do myself you, a favor and do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Next um, up, you're going to be telling me that you have some... <laughs> You know, so some tentacle sessions with your HP Lovecraft fetish. That's the oh, well, next. <laughs> actually, ooh, that's that's something to look into. See, see, now, now that I might look up, but not not. No, you're Princess just weird. Peach and Mario. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking about Princess Peach and Mario, they also looked into the couple searches, um, as in what people search together. And it uh, yeah, yeah. turns out that in order, it is Princess Peach, uh, sorry, Mario and Princess Peach, followed by Princess Peach and Princess Daisy, and then Princess Peach <laughs> and Bowser, and then Mario and Bowser, and lastly, Mario and Rosalina. Literally in that Shame order. Poor Luigi! That Where's in. Luigi? <laughs> Luigi's always left out of everything. <laughs> it's fascinating. Shame. It's, yeah, well, what can you do? And then... In terms of how popular the searches is, now this is what I found mega intriguing. Turns out the west side of the planet loves Mario and the east side of the planet hates Mario. Since, wow. as, uh, yeah, because the purchases are most popular in South America with a 79% interest rating um, compared to, I don't know what, what the baseline is, I think it's Canada. Um, yes. because they didn't have um, a number on Canada, if I remember correctly. And then the United States have a 24% interest rating, which is already mega lower compared wow. to Brazil. Yeah, yeah. But going to other parts of the world, you see a mega negative interest with Africa coming in at minus 80%. So you know yeah, how because you we have wouldn't... other things to yeah. look up than Mario and Bowser and Princess Peach. Exactly. We can look up, like, I don't know, 
Budavor's porn or something instead of Bowser Listen, and Peach. Guaranteed that probably exists. Yeah, guaranteed. probably. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> I know. It's just fascinating to me. So that was my foray into Porn Up Insights this week. Very, very uh, interesting. And this is the end of NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Edward. That was uh, insightful, as always. Insightful, um, it was. Wow, yeah. So for, for our long-term listeners and viewers, you'll know that this is a much shorter episode than usual. Um, essentially, we've just been very busy behind the scenes and haven't had as much time as normal to to prep these episodes. But I still think this was this went well. Um, I enjoyed it yeah. very much. Hey? Yeah. Now, I'd, with I love that it. said, we still have a few secrets that we are not allowed to speak about. Um, Mostly because they haven't been confirmed yet. So like that big secret, which is available now, both of them uh, were 100% confirmed when we spoke about them. The next upcoming one, it's still a little bit airy-fairy, but things are looking good. And should it happen, y'all will know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, but with that in mind... um, Thank you so much for listening as per always. Um, We will have more information about Xbox Series X next week. We've been particularly coy this week because we are not allowed to say much else. But next week, we'll have even more information on games and how it performs and so on and so forth. And yeah, and hopefully some other information if we're not too busy. <laughs> um, you know, videos are hard work and so are reviews. So um, we will, even if it's just a general chat session. Hey, Ed. We can we'll just uh, you know get together and talk and enjoy. Um, but uh, with that in mind, uh, thank you so much, everybody, for 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 listening and for watching and for for being around. Um, it's wonderful to always have you with us, and we love the support that you always give us. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think next week will be a particularly interesting episode, just in terms of numbers. But I'll have to check. Um, but if it does happen, I'll let you know. And other than that, from myself and Edward. Thank you so much as always and we'll see you again next week. Ciao yeah. ciao. Bye.